Thank you. Um, so my name is Ashish Patel. I am a graduate student at the University of Florida working under Dr. Christopher Ferraro. Uh, we are designing admixtures to improve the service life of nuclear power plant concrete structures, uh, specifically the concrete biological shield. Um, so uh, nuclear power plants were originally designed to operate for 40 years. They have since extended their operational lifespans to uh, 60 and 80 years, uh, and this has placed a spotlight on the serviceability of aging concrete infrastructure and nuclear plants. Um, the concrete is known to undergo uh, considerable strength loss and volumetric expansion under uh, neutron radiation. Um, in nuclear power plants, the concrete biological shields are uh, the most susceptible to this damage because they experience the most intense radiation fields uh, in the nuclear power plant. Um, so let me, sorry. The concrete biological shields, I'm sure most of you guys know, are designed to reduce the um, radiation dose uptake by plant personnel, people working in the facilities of nuclear plants. Um, so what is uh, the cause of damage due to neutrons? And it's a uh, radiation induced volumetric expansion. Uh, when um, crystalline minerals or crystalline structures are bombarded by neutrons. They tend to go undergo lattice uh, uh, deformations. They lose crystalline order. And in that process, they uh, undergo volumetric expansion. Um, at the macro scale, this volumetric expansion of crystalline minerals uh, would lead to uh, large scale expansion. Um, so rive uh, for concrete structures will primarily affect the crystalline minerals of aggregates since the majority of uh, the cementitious paste is amorphous. Um, <clears throat> so this volumetric expansion of aggregates uh, will cause uh, damage to the surrounding concrete matrix, the hardened concrete matrix. Um, now this is important because progressive amorphization of uh, minerals is um, going to uh, induce a uh, higher potential for ASR, uh, especially in aggregates with a lot of silicate minerals, uh, since silicate mineralogy is closely tied to alkali silica potential. Um, and this is where um, our project uh, primarily, um, uh, uh, our project primarily worked on is to uh, develop admixtures that would uh, kind of address this progressive increase in ASR potential in irradiated concrete structures. Um, and we utilize uh, boron primarily uh, in our admixtures because under neutron radiation, boron is very effective at capturing those neutrons. And uh, also they convert to lithium after neutron absorption. Um, so under neutron absorption, you can see this boric acid molecule uh, transform into lithium seven uh, and helium under neutron radiation. Um, and lithium, as we all know, is very effective against uh, um, ASR expansion. Um, <clears throat> so we designed admixtures for two different applications. First is for new concrete structures or new concrete biological shield structures. Um, and in this case, what we do is admix enough sufficient boron into the uh, concrete mix so that um, we get uh, enough lithium that's produced under the uh, radiation field uh, so that it can address that increased potential in rye. Um, so um, <clears throat> we also uh, designed the admixtures to prevent radiation-induced volumetric expansion from occurring uh, through depth and um, reduce the um, uh, uh, total uh, neutron uh, dose that's absorbed by uh, the plant personnel. For retrofit services, um, so concrete that's currently at biological shields are undergoing this problem. And during the, their extended lifespans, it's uh, very likely that they will experience some sort of damage due to radiation induced volumetric expansion. To prevent this from happening, what we did was we uh, modified the admixture so that it can be incorporated into precast panels anchored to uh, existing neutron exposed members during um, scheduled downtimes. And this would help reduce ride potential during the extended periods of operation. Uh, so new construction, again, provides neutron shielding and ESR mitigation since you're uh, producing lithium in uh, very, very close to the aggregate uh, cement paste interface where ASR gel is most likely to develop. 
uh, under uh, radiation and then for retrofit situations, uh, thin shielding to prevent further damage in uh, concrete biological shields. Uh, so our experimental plan initially uh, included um, uh, <clears throat> looking at the performance in cementitious based materials uh, and we looked at uh, isothermal calorimetry, setting time, and strength uh, to help downselect and optimize our boron compound because uh, there are certain boron compounds that do affect uh, negatively affect the uh, hydration properties, uh, setting time, and strength development of uh, concrete mixtures. So, uh, and then once we got that dialed in, um, we looked at the shielding performance of our admixtures in cement systems relative to concrete that has been uh, uh, relative to concrete that has the same mixed design as uh, concrete that's used in situ in an actual biological shield. Uh, and then uh, future plans are going to be um, using the University of Florida training reactor, which is a, a large scale test reactor using uh, fissioning materials to irradiate our uh, specimens and to measure uh, neutron dose rate through depth, as well as look at um, long-term neutron damage in uh, uh, cement systems that have our admixture incorporated in them. Um, all right, so here's some results from the performance testing of boron compounds. So isothermal calorimetry, as many of you guys know, is a measure of uh, heat release from cement hydration. Uh, it allows you to kind of qualify some of your cement mixes or mortar mixes uh, to use in uh, concrete, um, <clears throat> kind of understand when setting would probably occur in a, in a larger concrete structure. Um, so uh, the two well-known boron compounds, boric acid and borax, you can see cause severe uh, hydration delays at dosages necessary for effective neutron shielding in concrete. Um, we looked at multiple different compounds. We eventually ended up with uh, one compound that uh, almost uh, entirely uh, has the same uh, reaction morphology as the uh, control system. And then we also optimized that for thin shield admixtures where we increased the boron dose uh, without, uh, at all, without affecting the setting properties of uh, cement systems. Uh, then we scaled up to concrete. Uh, here's a control, uh, final set, and 28-day strength. Uh, with the typical borax mixture, we got uh, setting at 48 hours um, and very low strength compared to the control. With our admixture, we got uh, almost no uh, difference in the final setting time and very similar 28-day strength. Um, so here is the uh, neutron attenuation uh, using the small-scale neutron source. Um, so what you're seeing here is the performance of our BioShield, which has the same uh, mixed parameters, including the same exact uh, aggregates used in a, an actual biological shield at a nuclear power plant. Um, it does uh, show further a great improvement as you increase thickness. Um, and, uh, but when we uh, <clears throat> consider uh, thin shields, or new structures, we want to make sure that the damage uh, in, uh, through depth of your concrete shield is reduced. Uh, and so with the concrete system, what we can do is, or the concrete admixture, what we were able to do was reduce the, um, or improve the uh, attenuation uh, while reducing the uh, thickness needed for that equivalent uh, shielding performance. Uh, and this kind of can be abstracted to uh, look at uh, how, uh, rive will progress through depth of your material. So uh, in the biological shield, you're gonna have rive that occurs further in because there's less attenuation of those neutrons. At, um, at, with the concrete admixture, you're uh, significantly reducing the depth in which uh, radiation-induced volumetric would, expansion would occur in your concrete element when exposed to neutrons from one face of your concrete structure. Uh, for thin shields, we were able to reduce the, um, the shielding thickness necessary for equivalent shielding performance by almost 95%. And this is important because the, the cavity between the reactor and the concrete biological shield is very small and you would need to have a very thin system to be uh, uh, 
placed in between the reactor and the concrete biological ship for, uh, to prevent bribe from occurring uh, during the extended operating periods. Uh, so what we have planned are um, <clears throat> using the uh, large scale source, which is the University of Florida training reactor. Um, so uh, we're gonna be using larger site specimens than what we used for the small scale uh, uh, testing. Uh, the neutron shielding efficiency will be measured through specimen depth using a rotated series of dosimeter chip arrays, uh, as you can see in this image over here. Um, the, this will allow the measurement of neutron absorbed dose um, in both the transverse and the longitudinal direction. Um, the, uh, the source itself is going to be more representative of what concrete systems experience in actual in-service uh, conditions at nuclear power plants. Um, <clears throat> and for long-term irradiation, what we're gonna be doing is uh, we're gonna have 16 different specimens uh, in a cylindrical uh, assembly inserted directly into the uh, core of the training reactor. Um, and it's going to be exposed to enough neutron or uh, uh, an equivalent number of neutrons at an in-service concrete structure in a, uh, in a reactor would experience after five years of service. Um, and then this damage will be assessed petrographically. And this is primarily to ensure that the uh, admixture that we put into our system doesn't uh, negatively affect the microstructure or cause uh, uh, damage that is secondary to rive. Um, and so, and for thin systems, uh, what we want to do, because uh, they are being placed uh, ret uh, or retrofitted onto concrete biological shields uh, that are in service currently, uh, what we want to do is make sure that the, uh, the boron in the system um, uh, uh, can be, uh, or the, 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 the relationship or the interaction that boron has with neutrons can be uh, adequately predictive. Uh, so that we can uh, schedule, uh, optimize scheduling for maintenance and repairs of any of those uh, panels. Um, all right, and I'd like to thank the sponsors. ARPA-E is the project sponsor, but we also have people from uh, EPRI on this project, as well as RJ Lee, who will be running the petrographic analysis of our irradiated concrete specimens. 